So the initiative has been rolled and weapons have been drawn. You swing your hefty batter axe in the direction of the approaching bandit and it finds its mark. With the bandit failing to bring up its sword to parry, the GM announces, well done, that's a hit. Special hit location damage, please. Your smile broadens as your eyes scan down the list of the topic of this video. Combat specials, when and how to use them, and some of my personal favourites. My name's Inwills, and welcome to the In Crowd. Hello and welcome back to the next in the series of Mithras rule videos. Yes, I know it's been some time, but I've been focusing on the podcast and my other content streams, but I am back. So in this video or in these videos that I produce for Mithras rules, I look at different aspects of the game, such as classes or magic or anything that's up for interpretation or support to do with the Mithras rule system. And how do I decide on these? Well, I have a regular group, the in crowd, which I GM for on a regular basis. One of the aspects I really enjoy about the Mithras rule set is the way that combat works. Rather than the usual hack and slay of some other RPG systems, Mithras allows players who want to become combat experts to really increase their game. Not only are there combat traits available, more about this later on in the video, but there is also something known as combat specials, which all players who wish to focus in combat can excel at, achieving a combat dance as they trade blows with their opponents in the combat dance to the death or surrender. I think this is another reason why I like the Mithras combat system so much. There are so many options for ending combat rather than just reducing the opponent down to zero and their eventual demise. But before we go into which combat specials I really like using, let's start with a question. What are combat specials? On page 95 of the core rule book, it talks about combat specials. In the rules, they refer to them as special effects. And they say that these are techniques which allow characters to defeat a foe by other options rather than just killing or injuring them. These could include rendering them helpless or forcing them to surrender forcing them to defend or even possibly disarming them. So with combat, a differential role is used, meaning that the resulting difference in success level indicates an opportunity for a special effect to take place. There is a table on page 51 of the core rule book to help you with this. If you are unfamiliar with the combat system on Mithras, then I've created a video for this um, that you can go back and have a look. The link is somewhere on the screen now, but I'll put it in the comments below as well. So the number of specials available to a character is equal to the difference between the levels of success. For example, if the fearless Hengis is successful in his attack and the bumbling bandit fails his parry, then one special is awarded because there's one level uh, difference between the attack and the parry. However, if Hengis had scored a critical while the bandit couldn't take an action, for example, for having no action points or failing, then Hengis would have two specials which he could use. And because Hengis has had a critical, it means that he can use one of them of the critical list of specials. Once a player knows how many specials they can use, they need to declare these before the hit location and the damage is rolled. 
if a special is able to be stacked, then two or more of the same special can be taken. This is very useful, for example, if you're firing a bow, since rapid reload can actually stack, with re which reduces the reload time. More about ranged weapons in the video at the top of this screen or in the description below. On the table of weapons, which starts on page 63, the general type of combat effect or specials for each weapon is listed. For example, a dagger has bleed and impale, while the mace has bash and stun location. At this point, it is important to realise and recognise that these are not the only specials which are available for players while using that weapon. For example, choose location and maximise damage would be specials available for all those weapons. It might be worth having a chat with your GM about some of the specials relating to individual weapons. For example, on the table, rapiers have impale only listed. I would be more than happy as a GM to allow the character to use bleed with this weapon as well, as well as the wonderful special called Scar Foe, which allows you to do the classic Zorro trick marking your opponent with a <laughs> or any other initials that you wish to carve. But before we get into talking about some of my personal favourite specials, please consider liking, commenting and subscribing to the channel. I produce regular videos about Mithras and some actual play sessions as well, as well as personal blogs. I'm also working on a new series called The Gibbering GM, when I actually discuss with you aspects of role-playing games, which I often um, think about in my spare time. So if that's what you enjoy, then please don't forget to subscribe and press that bell button so you'll get a notification when the next video goes live. Also, if you would like to provide some extra support if you know what I mean then the link to my patreon account and buy me a coffee link are down in the comment section okay back to specials before I start to talk about some of my own personal favorites at both a player and a GM I would like to highlight some places that you can go or take your players to actually engage more with the specials and find out more about them in this way, hopefully you and your players will move away from the usual choose location and max damage. So the first thing I would like to direct you to is the Mithras Matters podcast, which is episode 18, I think, which is for November's episode. In that, I talked to Dan True, who is the author of some of the combat modules that I'm going to mention in a, in a minute. We had a really good chat about not only the publications that he's done, but also about designing combat characters or combat encounters for your group. I'll put the link to the podcast in the comments below. There's a lot of things in that comment so far. So breaking the habit is a ready-made scenario for characters to play and enjoy. The module written by Dan True actually provides the GM with characters and opponent sheets, as well as a priority system for the opponents to implement if they get attacked. It also provides some actions for certain situations, for example, neutralizing the shield that an opponent is using. There are also resources to play this on Roll20. This makes it an excellent starting scenario for you to introduce your players to the Mithras combat system or as a one-off scenario if you're, or one of your or more of your players in your group are absent. In a similar way, um, Dan has um, written and published um, a module called Take Cover, which does the same as Breaking the Habit, but introduces or um, demonstrates the use of ranged weapons and their specials. Now, I often think that ranged weapons are very hard to use in Mithras, 
But, you know, reading this module and hopefully eventually gaining, um, engaging with it with the in crowd will probably give me some ideas and hopefully the players as well. And maybe soon we'll find that a character like Biggs uh, or Briggs comes back into the campaign. So you'll get access to some great specials, including pin down and circumvent cover more often to actually plague the party with arrows. And finally, don't forget the combat cards. And again, I'll put the link somewhere around with, with a review that I did on them. They provide you not only a quick reference for the specials, but also an effective way to monitor um, fatigue and actions. As a GM, I always like using this, but while experiencing my first time playing Mithras with Lawrence Whitaker, the GM in the Leoness uh, module, you can find the actual gameplay on YouTube somewhere. I actually used the specials and combat cards to bring my character, Surf of the Mighty, to life in a fantastic barroom brawl. One of the things I really like about using the combat cards is that all specials have certain criteria and possible resistance roles. So it's really important that you have these at hand quickly, hence why I use the combat card so much. For example, one of my favorite specials is Grip. Um, this is what it says for, on the um, description, but you can also find it on page 97 of the core rulebook. Provided the opponent is within the attacker's unarmed combat reach, he or she may use an empty hand or similar limb capable of gripping such as claws, tails or tentacles to hold an opponent and preventing them from being able to change weapon range or disengage from combat. The opponent may break or attempt to break free um, on his turn, requiring the opposed brawn or unarmed combat role against the um, attacker's original role. Um, the defender can use either skill that they wish. If the grip victim wins, they manage to break free. Note that some attackers using brawn may be so strong that no amount of brute force or cunning technique can remove them from their grip. Yes, let's have a whole load of little monsters gripping that big fighter to the ground. Okay, back to my favourites. These are not individual specials, but probably a combination of specials which I like to use. Sunder actually reduces the damage value um, in a location that you've hit. So with my two-handed weapons, I like to use Sunder first to reduce the armor and then to choose a location to get through to actually damaging somebody. Of course, I've mentioned already about disarm and grip, and these are fantastic for facing multiple opponents if they're all coming against one character. I like to use this as a mob approach when I'm GMing, gripping the character over and over again until they tumble to the ground. Flurry is a great special. Um, if you have some sort of unarmed combat, you jab with the sword and then follow it with a headbutt, kick or sucker punch. Disarm followed by press advantage forces the opponent to only to defend. And then compel surrender is an excellent combination when you want to take people alive. And finally, I've mentioned it before, that classy scar opponent opponent yeah mark all of them with a z remember that all it's all about the storytelling and the narrative for me so i might actually use some weapons incorrectly when compared to their historical use and that's it for this video that's all about combat specials that you need to know please do have a look at them all and try to decide what um, moves or specials your character or an NPC will use. Remember, it really brings that combat to life. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that all your opposed roles earn you with one well-deserved special.
or even more. Until next time, happy Mithrasing everyone, and I'll see you all later. See ya, bye.